Hi, my name's John. Welcome to the first part in a series of short videos all about how to use a metal lathe. Before we start, I just want to two things I want to get perfectly clear. The first thing is, I'm not a machinist, I've had no formal training, I'm a mechanic that pisses about, but I have pissed about with lathes and machine tools for a lot of years now. The first thing I want to start off is safety. I wear glasses and the lenses on my glasses are armored lenses, tougher lenses. You've probably noticed on some of my videos, I've only got one eye. I didn't lose the eye on a lathe or a machine, but I can assure you it is not very funny, so you need to wear eye protection. If I'm machining something and there's bits of swarf, particularly brass coming off, or I'm doing something that's not what you call perfectly safe, something that isn't in the chuck really well, I put that on, full face mask, simple as that. You can't take too much care of your eyes. Second thing is, no jewellery at all. I've always got bump finger ends, but I've got ten fingers. No jewellery, no dangly sleeves. These sleeves need to be rolled up and tied up. If you get caught in that chuck, especially in a layer this size, you'll only get caught in it once. It will pull you in and kill you, no doubt about it. A small hobbyist layer will pull fingers off. These aren't toys, these are machine tools. You must respect it. Not be frightened of it, but appreciate that it wants to hurt you. The next safety related item is this thing here, a chuck key. Chuck key's got one use, it's for tightening the chuck. So you tighten the chuck up with it, then you take it out and you put it down there or you put it wherever it lives, mine just lives down there. You never ever leave a chuck key in there. It looks good, you can find it straight away. This lathe will accelerate from zero to 2000 RPM as quick as you can see that. If you set the lathe away with that in, it's going to go forward, it's going to come flying out. And if you're lucky, it'll embed itself in the wall behind you. If you're unlucky, it'll take off your face and embed that in the wall behind you. So you don't leave the chuck key in there, ever. Right, that's enough safety. Let's get on and uh, I'll show you what the various parts of the lathe do, what their functions are, how they're all sort of related, interconnected, and then we'll, we'll go from there. This lathe is a Harrison 140, it's an industrial three-phase machine. All the parts and all the components are just the same as a hobby machine, just that bigger on a bigger scale. A lathe rotates a workpiece and the tool stands still. It's a single point tool, so it cuts on one little point, so the work rotates and the tool stands still. This part here is a chuck, that's what holds. The workpiece, there's various types of chuck, that's four jaw chucks, that's a three jaw chuck, collar chucks, that's face plates. I will go through some of the different methods of work holding once we start to use the lathe. There's a big three phase motor down the back of there, which drives through a couple of belts in a gearbox and turns that. This goes between 32 and 2000 RPM. I normally use 1000 RPM is high speed and then go down to about 250. But we'll do feeds and speeds a little bit later on. I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer. That's the tool. That's actually a right hand knife tool. That's a tool holder and this is the tool post. You can take this off and put different tools on very quickly. It saves messing around with bits of shames. Once again we'll go into that a little bit later on. You can turn the angle of that to whatever you need. The tool holder and tool post is fastened onto a compound slide. This can be set at any angle. It's used for cutting tape as, as well as useful for screw cutting. The compound slide is attached to the cross slide. That goes back and forward across the lathe for facing cuts. The hand wheels on the compound and the cross slide have graduations on. These are metric, so you know how much you're feeding in by. So you know how much you're taking off per cut. As well as the graduations on the hand wheels, I've also got a DRO a digital readout. That's got a magnetic scale on and that works on both X and Y axis to tell us how much I'm moving each control 
you can change it instantly between metric and imperial. It doesn't make the lead any more accurate, it just makes it easier to use. Not important, you don't need to have a DRO, but it does make the lathe a lot simpler to use and it means you don't have to worry about backlash. The cross slide is attached to the lathe carriage. That moves back and forward, up the bed, that big hand wheel is what turns it. This lathe also has power feed on so it can be powered forwards or backwards or in and out. So it's sliding or facing. This is the lathe tail stock, it's mounted parallel to the wheels, it slides up and down and there's a big lever there that locks it. It's got a Morse taper in there and it takes various attachments, a drill chuck being one of the most common. So you can lock this off, you can turn that and you can drill holes. You can also put a centre in here to support the workpiece, that there simply locks the barrel off to stop it from moving. It's important that this is lined up in the centre in the lathe. Once again, in a later video, I'll show you how that is achieved. The headstock on this machine, it's got levers there for changing different gears to vary the speed of the spindle. That's a high and low range on there. It's also got a clutch so you can disengage the drive but leave the motor running. Down here, it's got a gearbox. The gearbox in here controls the ratio that the spindle turns compared to that screw there. That screw there is used for screw cutting. That's engaged on the carriage and as the chuck turns or the spindle turns, that turns as a ratio so you can cut threads. Once again, we'll get into this a little bit later on. That one there alters the rotation of the lead screw forwards or backwards. This lathe also has a forward and backward switch on it, so I can run the lathe backward. It's got a two-speed motor, high range and low range. So basically that was a quick insight or a quick look at what the various controls on the lathe do. The next one I'll probably cover actual tooling and I'll do facing and I'll do surfacing. We'll get into screw cutting, boring, drilling. That's quite a lot to cover. Um, I've, a few people have asked us if I would do this sort of video so I'll just sort of go over the floor and see what um, see what happens if there's anything you'd like us to cover I'd normally just send us an email right that's the end of the first part I hope you enjoyed it um, and I'm sure it'll get better as we get into the sort of workings of the lathe